Hey everyone, welcome to today's video about Azure Service Bus. This time I'm talking about sessions and partitions. And so we'll just do a quick recap of things we talked about before. Uh, one of the things that's really important about message brokers is the competing consumers pattern. And so when we're talking about kind of queues and even topics and subscriptions, it's really important to remember that we can actually, we have more than one uh, potentially producer sending messages into a queue or to a topic. Then we can have more than one receiver receiving from a queue or from, from an individual subscription. And we call these competing consumers. Every time one of them is ready to consume a message, uh, they get the next available message from the front of the queue or from the subscription. But we've also got these other concepts in Service Bus called partitions and message sessions. And these are both kind of interesting in how they relate to, uh, to, to that, that message flow we just talked about. And so partitions relate to how messages are stored inside Service Bus. They're about raising the overall availability of the messaging platform. And then message sessions are uh, about controlling how things are received from Service Bus and they're about delivering uh, messages in order when we're doing competing consumers. And so remember, our general idea of queues, I've used this uh, analogy in the past about a queue being effectively like a road. And so as we send things into the message, they just kind of queue up behind each other. Uh, under the covers, when we create a queue on Azure Service Bus, uh, what happens is there's a, a messaging unit, uh, which is like some processing power and, and, and a messaging store. And that queue gets allocated to a specific messaging unit. When that message unit fails, because eventually you know, software and hardware can be expected to fail, uh, then your entire queue becomes unavailable. You're unable to send to the queue, unable to receive from the queue or the topic and subscription. Uh, and so you're effectively unavailable. When we create partition queues, uh, what happens is, um, as you say, enable partitioning on the queue and hit create, it'll actually get created across 16 different messaging units. And then depending on uh, the partition key uh, or an algorithm, if you don't specify one, uh, the messages will flow across those different messaging units. And so what happens then is if one of those becomes unavailable, uh, the messages can't be kind of processed through those, uh, but the other messaging units that are still available will continue to process messages. And so when we talked in the past about um, how uh, competing consumers or, or any consumers in the queue effectively uh, take the next message from the front of the queue, what will happen is potentially that it may not be uh, the, ne the, the next message that was sent will be the next message that's available on a partition queue. So for a messaging unit, that's still available. So when we set up partition queues, we have to do that when we create them. You can't enable partitioning uh, after the fact on a queue and you can't disable it after the fact because instead of being allocated to a single messaging unit, it gets allocated across 16 messaging units. And that has to happen during uh, during the create for that uh, for that queue or for that topic and subscription pair. And so we've got this trade-off. As I just said, we're really talking about um, choosing availability over consistency. We want to make sure that we can still pro like if, if there's any kind of messaging unit failure, we can still process messages uh, that that are coming across other messaging units. So it's about trying to make sure that we can stay processing messages for as long as possible, even if we can't process all of them, even if some of them. Uh, are unable to be sent because of the, the or unable to be received because that, that mission is unavailable. Um, and so uh, this is this is obviously going to lower our potential, potentially lower our consistency because we're going to be processing messages that may have been sent after uh, some of the ones that are on that failed unit. Um, and we'll, we'll be processing messages out of order. So we need to be able to, uh, we need to make sure that we're, we're choosing to use this at the right time. Uh, what's really important when we do this is to set our partition keys. If you don't set them, um, Service Bus will just kind of like round robin choose a partition to send the message to. Uh, but if we set what, what we want to do in order to, to kind of keep our consistency as good as we can, uh, we, we want to set our partition keys to, to uh, so all the messages that need to be processed together, need to be processed, um, they're, they're about the same thing, uh, get that same partition key so they end up on the same partition. So we don't uh, we don't get a, like a create customer record, update customer record, um, with, which go onto different partitions. Then potentially we, the one with the create on is unavailable and we pro try and process the update before the create is processed. So what we would do there is we would set the partition key to be the customer ID, or if it's orders, the order ID, and then they, those two messages would both flow onto the same partition and we either have both of them or we have neither of them. So the other concept we're talking about is message sessions. So this is about grouping messages together that need to be received in order uh, relative to each other. 
Uh, so when you enable message sessions on a topic, you have to set that message, you have to set the session ID on every message you send to it. Uh, when you receive them, you have to receive from a specific session. Uh, and so you, you enable it by setting the enable sessions when you when you go to create the queue or create the topic. Um, and then from that point on, it's on for the entire queue or for the entire topic. Every every interaction with the queue or topic has to be in, in the context of a session. And so if we take our analogy like a queues like a road and everybody kind of queues up, a message session uh, or a session enabled queue is like a multi-lane road. So as messages arrive, uh, they do arrive in order and kind of maintain their order, but they're kind of sorted into lanes of that road. Um, and what this enables us to do is read from a specific message session to get the messages in that session in order. Uh, and so if we have one consuming application for this, what we would see is um, it would it would receive from all of those different sessions. So if we start a consuming application uh, and we don't try and specify the sessions or we don't, we don't cap the number of sessions we're listening to, we'll listen to all of them. Uh, and it'll, it'll effectively work like a, a non-session enabled queue. Um, but what we're able to do is create more than one consuming application. And rather than them just randomly taking the next message, not random, but like taking the next message from the front of the queue, which could be about anything, uh, they will get allocated sessions. And so they'll make sure that they get the, uh, the next available one in the sessions that are allocated to them. And so you won't get, uh, while, while the first consuming application here is processing a, a, the blue message, you won't get the, the second consuming applications working its way through the, the queue behind it and gets the next blue message and potentially processes out of order, right? So if there's if we have um, competing consumers, it makes sure that the messages themselves still get processed in order because a particular session of messages, a particular lane of this road will only ever get, be being processed by one of the consuming applications. If we end up with more consuming applications, uh, we can make it so they, they each get their own message session. Uh, and I'll show in future videos how we actually achieve this with code. But what will happen here is, um, as I said, each application will get a single message session. They'll only receive the messages in that session that they've been allocated. So if, if the first one, uh, the first consuming application kind of connects, uh, gets allocated these blue messages, uh, when it goes back to the broker, it won't take that green one, purple one, or yellow one, or move to the next blue message because that's the session that it's been allocated. Uh, if at this point, if we had another consuming application, so we've got now more than a total number of sessions, like a distributed log broker, uh, it won't actually be able to pick up any session. There won't be anything available for it to process, uh, and so it won't get any messages. Uh, if one of those other consuming applications failed, its, its message session will become available for consumption and then and then it might pick it up and start processing those messages. But it, we won't ever have the one, one lane of traffic on this, uh, on, on, on this queue is being processed by more than one consumer. Uh, so again, the, the partitions are about how we store inside the message broker. Message sessions are about how we receive from the message broker in order. Um, if you use these together, then you can end up getting the high availability that you want with partitions uh, and then having the message ordering and therefore hopefully consistency uh, that you would get with message sessions. So you won't have quite as big a trade-off um, between availability and consistency. If, you're, if your business case lends itself to using both of these and you've got really good natural uh, session keys, um, then, uh, then you can use both of these together and get a kind of uh, kind of high throughput, high high availability, uh, and hopefully high consistency uh, messaging system setup. Um, if you do use these two together, um, then the message session ID will get used as the partition key as well. We need to make sure that the sessions uh, live on an individual partition, so we can make sure we can we can keep the consistent order in between them. So hopefully you found this video useful. Uh, if you did, please hit like on the video, uh, hit subscribe so you can uh, you can see the rest of the videos that I get, end up producing. Hit post notifications if you want so you get notified when I produce them. Uh, the video that will come after this is going to be some code examples about how do we uh, how do we send and receive messages uh, in order using message sessions, even when we're using competing consumers. So we'll have some of those demos uh, in my next video. But thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.